All right, y'all. So we recently did a, a Fox News debate on Roe versus Wade. It was interesting. It was Alan Dershowitz versus Hannity and Greg Jarrett, I think his name is. Um, and now we have a CNN Roe versus Wade debate. And this one is honestly way more cringeworthy than the Fox News one. So let's take a look and we'll break it down. But there are Republicans trying to push forward a federal ban on abortions that are more than 15 weeks. Do you agree that a federal ban should be put in place? Well, I think what's important to just take a step back and note that if you're if you're living in California or New York or the you know more progressive areas, nothing will change. This is where things are. And wait, I think wait, that wait, when wait, you're talking federal about... Ban comes in. I yeah. knew this was going to happen. Well, yes, Abby. I mean, I okay, the point from her right now is technically true. Yeah, if you live in New York or California right now, nothing changes. All Roe versus Wade did is allowed states that want to ban abortion to ban abortion. So it you know could end up being more of the states, but uh, right now I think it's 13 that have those like snapback provisions, which it immediately is banned the second Roe versus Wade is overturned. But more of them are coming. More of them are coming. Stricter abortion laws are coming all around the country. There's no doubt about it. The reason why what she's doing is a little disingenuous here is the question was, hey, do you not do you see that? Republicans are now saying we want a national abortion ban. Do you agree with that? And she kind of dodges that and just says, well, right now it's legal in California and New York. Okay, we'll answer the question, though. Let's talk about that portion of it. Do you support a national abortion ban? You literally I, I, so, so you it. don't, but do you think, but just yes or no, is it, should this be also a federal ban eventually? In well, your mind, I, I personally prefer uh, that, but uh, I know that. Uh, that uh, 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 uh. Look, this just goes to show you the argument that the right was making for decades and decades and decades was not their true belief because they were so focused on just let's overturn Roe versus Wade. Let's overturn Roe versus Wade. So their argument for the longest time was I'm in favor of leaving it up to the states to determine their own abortion policies. That's my position. Well, now that Roe's gone, whoop, that Overton window shifts further right. And now they're like, well, really what I want is no abortions at all in this country, period, in red states and blue states. Well, I got bad news for you. If we have a national abortion ban, oh, there's still going to be abortions. But the abortions are going to be back alley abortions with coat hangers, and they're going to be women who end up dying as a result of it. There are, state, there are countries that have banned abortion, and the abortion rate has stayed the same or gone up. That's happened. And they just become more dangerous abortions. Now, but stop and think about the extremism of that position. That's a position, depending on the poll you look at, anywhere between 10% and 19% of Americans agree with that position, a nationwide abortion ban throughout the entirety of the pregnancy. So you're telling me even the six weeks, 10 weeks, and by the way, 90% of abortions happen before like 20 weeks. Maybe 95% happen before 20 weeks. They're saying, no, 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 even those early ones, we're against them. That absolutely is a violation of the right to privacy. Absolutely is that. I mean, at that point in the pregnancy, the state does not have a compelling reason to get involved. And it absolutely should be the woman's choice. And let's be clear, we're talking about a fundamentally different thing at six weeks versus late-term abortion, eight months, etc. It's totally different. And these guys are going to obfuscate that fact to the high heavens and say, no, murder is murder. The second that the guy nuts in the woman, there are three people in the room. Nonsense. People on the other side don't prefer that. And so that is the beauty of federalism to say there will, the people will migrate. They will vote with their feet at the end of okay, the day. Okay, well, if that's the beauty of federalism, then you shouldn't be for a national abortion ban. If, oh, that's the beauty of federalism. Okay, then stop here. Stop here. Say, this is my position. And if they do a national abortion ban, say, I'm against it because I like federalism and I like the states to decide. But she's having, she's taking both positions at the same time. So as much as I would like to see a federal ban, I know that that is politically unlikely. And so that, I think, is the best compromise. Is it politically unlikely, though? Is it? It looks like the Republicans are about to win the House. It looks like you might have a Republican House, Senate, and presidency soon. So is it really unlikely? Because we know damn well Republicans have no qualms about passing legislation that, like, 7% of the country agrees with. By the way, I remember there was a story involving internet privacy. This happened during the, the Trump administration. Trump signed a law that literally had like a 7% or 9% approval rating. It was to take away your like 
right to your data online. It allows corporations to sell your data to other corporations. Trump signed the bill that had like a 7 or 9% approval rating. Didn't bat an eyelash. Didn't think anything of it. Republicans would do this in a heartbeat. No pun intended saying heartbeat in the conversation about abortion. And in fact, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said not that her, she did not say her I, let name me quote, tonight from let me your quote mouth her. after Excuse what you just me. said. You were literally, you cited a case I'm going to go to Abby. Disrupt, okay, disrupt, okay not going to, let's not sugarcoat it. That was the cringiest entrance I've ever seen into the discussion. This one's supposed to be the one that's on the left. It's like, don't you dare say Ruth Bader Ginsburg's name. Can, can you please do some substantive replies to this woman? Because it, she's ripe to have a bunch of substantive replies. Unfortunately, you're about to see this woman does not deliver. Really just cited a case from 1896 before women had the right to vote in this country. What happened okay, today... Okay, hold, hold on, hold on. So before... The clip started before you saw it. And yeah, she brings up... The conservative woman brought up Plessy versus Ferguson. But she brought that up to make the argument overturning precedent isn't always a bad thing. She brought it up for that reason. So she's not saying, like, you know, we should have never overturned Plessy versus Ferguson. She's saying it was good to overturn Plessy, and she thinks the Roe versus Wade thing is analogous. Now, it's not. I don't think it's good to overturn the precedent of Roe versus Wade. But that's the point she was making. She wasn't like, and I've seen this a lot recently. I saw it, John Cornyn on Twitter said something going after Obama when Obama said overturning precedent is bad. And Cornyn was like, oh, yeah, what about Plessy versus Ferguson? And people thought Cornyn was saying he supports Plessy versus Ferguson. That's not what he was saying. That, I mean, come on, don't be dense. Let's not be idiots in, in the process of having political arguments and disagreements. Let's, like, still use our brains and stuff. Unfortunately, people are losing their minds when it comes to a lot of this stuff. So I don't think this is a good argument. I understand the argument she was trying to make with Plessy. Now, I don't agree. Roe should have been precedent that stayed. Uh, Plessy shouldn't have stayed. But to, to just have the moral outrage, like, oh, you brought up a case from the 1800s. How dare you? No, that's not. Uh, stop. Just stop. It's absolutely horrifying. Every single person in this country, including you, who's celebrating today about this overturning, you support a 12-year-old who's been raped to have to actually carry her pregnancy to term that is what you support you support women dying in this country if they have an atopic pregnancy because that is what will happen that is what you that is not okay on the you support women dying if they have uh you know an issue with the pregnancy and they can't get an abortion that's like a that's kind of a fair point you know like if you ban all abortion and then some women die because you banned all abortions and they couldn't get an abortion, but they needed one in order to survive. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think the rate point is fair because even a lot of the people who are for a national abortion ban do make exceptions for uh, rape or underage women or incest or even life of the mother. There are even a lot of the anti-abortion states do have exceptions for life of the mother. Um, so it's a little bit of an overreach of an argument here. But it is not an overreach of an argument to say, yes, there are going to be more women who die as a result of a national abortion ban and even just Roe being overturned. More women will die as a direct result of that. There was that case. Remember, remember, I think it was like in 2014, there was a case coming out of Ireland where a woman was denied an abortion and she died as a result of it. And it was a big national scandal. And yeah, that's possible to happen here. And if one of those things happen or two of those things happen... There's going to be national outrage and backlash, and then that would bring about, I think, legal reform in terms of the country would say, well, every state needs to make exceptions for rape, life of the mother, etc. But I think her argument's a little bit of an overreach, but not much of an overreach. That is what you support let me, let me, when you let me, support let me the jump in. I never said anything about it. Because that is what this sorry, decision I, right. has caused. That is what this decision right. has caused. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, you taking away so, my rights and supporting it is disrespectful. So Abby, that's, is, a, that's a good point. That's true. She's like, oh, you're being disrespectful to me and putting words in my mouth. Well, you taking away our rights is disrespectful. Yeah, true, fair. I do think you're kind of putting words in her mouth, but also supporting the overturning of Roe and supporting a national abortion ban is definitely taking away rights. Makes one point about Plessy versus Ferguson, and I have heard this argument before. I think everyone has heard the argument uh, that this was back in the 1800s, and then 54 years later. Brown versus Board of Education came up and a decision was made um, that reversed that. 
I, I do want to ask you, Abby, what do you think about that particular argument? Because all Americans probably at this point, I, I would say most Americans, think that was the right decision. The and response to that is um, Brown versus Board of Education was overturning a precedent, but it was giving more rights Overturning Roe versus Wade is overturning precedent, and it is taking away rights. That's the reaction to it. So in other words, Brown versus Board of Education is a precedent that should have been overturned. Roe versus Wade is a precedent that shouldn't be overturned. That's the reaction to it. She's not going to give that answer. And what Carrie is saying is this is also a moral decision, and this, well, is, this you is the can, right decision. You can have your moral decisions and your moral beliefs, sincerely, your religious beliefs, your moral beliefs, you should be able to have those in this country. It is the United States of America, and you should be able to act on your moral and religious beliefs. But what I am asking tonight is that people wake up in this country and respect me, respect women across this country, our choices, respect doctors. That is what this is about. Literally, women will die. That is what's happening. When Roe, again, is being overturned today, you will have... 12-year-olds having to carry a rapist pregnancy to term. That the is answer what is to happening. violence is not that more is violence. Is abortion happening. is violence. All abortion answers. is violence abortion, to an unborn child. Birth birth is abortion is violence. Okay, you guys get the gist of it. I don't think that the pro-choice person was a very good debater. Uh, I don't think she made particularly substantive points, but obviously the conservative woman is out of her damn mind. Uh, to that last point of like, abortion is violence, you don't answer violence with more violence. Uh, is it really? So when we're talking about uh, pre-viability, when we're talking about pre-nervous system being created, we're talking about six weeks in, we're talking about eight weeks in, even 15 weeks in. Is that Seriously, that's the same as murdering a 30-year-old? Now, she would say yes, but I would rest my case on that. It, you really think that's the same? You really think that's the same. Now, look, late term is a different question. If you have a fetus that's, um, you know, it's viable, you're eight months in, that's a totally separate question. And Roe allowed for that to be viewed as a separate question. Roe is moderate. Roe says early on in the pregnancy, 100% you're right. Middle of the pregnancy, health regulations are allowed. End of the pregnancy, uh... States, if they want, can ban that. That's Roe versus Wade. It is moderate. It is intelligent. That's Casey, too. Casey's slightly different, a little bit more restrictive, but not much. That's, that was an intelligent approach. What this conservative woman wants is insane. It's insane. Ban all abortions. All abortions are violence. She would probably argue the morning after pill is violence, or an abortion pill three weeks in is violence. Um... It stems from a religious notion, a fundamentalist notion, that the second the sperm meets the egg, there's a third person in the room, because there's a soul there, a soul. So uh, her arguments were horrendous. This CNN debate was without a doubt a giant cringe fest. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.